Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Mentor, a Siemens business with Robert Hogenstride, who's going to talk today about the Portable Stimulus Standard. So, Robert, we've heard a lot about the Portable Stimulus Standard. What is it and what's different here? PSS, as it's called, is a new uh, test bench verification language that's been standardized. It actually stands for Portable Test and stimulus standard. I don't know what happened to the T. But what's different is if you compare it to just System Verilog and UVM, it's really about what versus how. Let me give you an analogy. With uh, System Verilog, it's much like when I was growing up, if you wanted to get directions, you use something called the Thomas Guide, which was a book of maps. And in that book, you would look at it, it would have all the streets and the names and stuff, and you would figure out, okay, if I want to go from point A to point B, here are all the streets that I could get there, but I had to do user-directed turn-by-turn myself. And to figure out the most efficient route, I had to use my experiences and my biases. As I recall from the Thomas Maps, they went on for different pages, and those pages didn't necessarily connect in an easy way, right? Correct. So it was a real challenge, and, you know, everybody had one in their car, and you would have to figure out how to get there from directions and line up the pages. And again, it was very manual process, very self-directed. The thing with PSS, it's a declarative language. And what that means is it's more analogous to today what we use, which is something like Google Maps. We just say we want to go from this city to this city. It has a knowledge database on all the possible paths. It has lots of information from, say, users and other data uh, in terms of experiences about which roads get clogged at what time. And it actually is able to go through that and figure out the most optimal solutions and paths for you to go from point A to point B. And that's what PSS does for the user, especially when it comes to creating stimulus that really covers the coverage space that we measure as part of uh, verification. So why don't you draw this out for us? Okay. Robert, what are we looking at here? Okay, what I thought I'd do is I'd start with what is the buzz about PSS. It's a single declarative language that allows for reuse, and that's where a lot of the interest is in. You can use a single language to be the specification to drive the different platforms in the verification uh, space from simulation, emulation, silicon prototyping. You can also use a single language to drive the verification up through the hierarchy from IP block level to subchip or chiplet level all the way to SOC. And also you have reuse from design to design uh, as you go from, say, uh, version 1.0 to 1.5 to 2.0 of a design, or you want to have configurable IP that would be validated in lots of different designs. So what's the real challenge people are facing? The real challenge that people are facing, Ed, is that as you move through the hierarchy and you move through the platform, that there's different verification techniques that are used. And each of those techniques has a different type of specification, a different tool set, uh, and it becomes very difficult to manage, and it's very difficult to reuse what's in one aspect to another aspect of design. Let me give you an example. If I'm doing something at the IP block level, I might have created my test specification in System Verilog and UVM or VHDL. And I run verification on that block and everything's fine. Now I will actually want to test that block in the context of my SOC. One way that I would actually like to do that is I'd actually like to ro load that same verification sequence as embedded C code running on the embedded processor in my SOC. Now I have to translate my System Verilog UVM design uh, uh, sequence concept into C. What if I have a single language that's very abstract that I can describe that, and then I can use tools that automatically 
write the UVM system Verilog sequences for that verification process and take the same specification and generate the C code that would actually be, lo be loaded onto the embedded processor. And what you're doing is really raising the abstraction level here, right? Yes, that's the real value of PSS is to raise the abstraction level so it's more portable and also can take advantage of automation to generate the details that are tool and platform specific for verification. If you raise the abstraction level, you can also start understanding what can be reused in this, right? Correct. And, and one way I like to look at, I'm an engineer and I like equations, is the real power of this is you have productivity equals verification times reuse cubed. The cubed would be every one of these different facets coming off of there? Right, multiplied together because they're not additive, it's really multiplicative. How much time can you save by doing it this way? Ah, that's the big question. <laughs> as, as with all reuse, and it really depends on how much you can take advantage all at once, which takes time to build that into your verification infrastructure. How do you change the infrastructure to take advantage of this? That's a good question, Ed. So really, if you think about PSS and the productivity, it's really represented by this Rubik's Cube, where each side of the cube or axis represents the proposition with reuse. The challenge that customers are facing is that today's infrastructure looks like this. So the real question is, how do you get from this to this. I see you've deconstructed everything. What happens there? Yeah, so one approach, which is the revolutionary approach, is take your current infrastructure and just break it apart and start from scratch. So let's look at what that means. Robert, what have you drawn out now? Well, what I've drawn here is uh, to kind of help us walk through how, what's the thinking in terms of adopting the PSS capability as part of the verification infrastructure. If we take a look at it, I've drawn this pyramid here uh, representing design hierarchy. So you've got IP block, chiplet, SOC. Then over here I have what are the platforms that are most commonly used as part of that verification process. For example, the primary uh, verification platform for IP block is simulation. And you typically don't get to prototyping until SOC. So one uh, current thinking is, let's use the same type of technique that we use in modern chip design, which is top down. So the prevalent thinking is, why don't we start here at the SOC level? Because one, it provides the most benefit, again, you get this platform interoperability, which is really where people want to get to. That's a hard sell inside of organizations though, right? Yes, it is. That's one of the things that's really tough is because a lot of the SOC verification infrastructure is developed in-house today at the large semiconductor companies. So they really would have to take a look at the, the proposition of doing more buy versus make that they're currently doing. But there's an interest here because what they really want is platform interoperability, which is another word for they really want to be able to pick the best in class tools from different vendors. And if they all work off the same language, that really enables that. So there's an interest there, but because of that, the effort is also extremely high in terms of integrating PSS into that infrastructure. So what's the solution? Well, the real problem is if we go down this, the benefit decreases in terms of the reuses. We go down the pyramid. However, the effort decreases. Yet, if we look at it in this pyramid, really, most of the users are at the bottom. There's more IP block verification engineers than there are SOC engineers. And the premise is 
the larger the user base, the more resistance it is. So the real question is, if this is a huge benefit but a huge effort, the effort here is smaller, the real question is, how do we have a better value proposition, higher benefit for the IP uh, and block user to take advantage of this? And the answer is? The answer is really finding a key challenge that's used as part of simulation for the largest users. What is this formula? Okay, so again, what I mentioned was that we need to find a key challenge around simulation that focuses on a benefit for the IP block designer to take advantage of this PSS capability. And right now, what I'm hearing from customers is the biggest challenge is improving simulation regression efficiency. Since I'm an engineer, by heart, I like equations. So really, efficiency is a function of how much improvement in work and improvement over time. Now, it's pretty natural to focus on the delta T. Uh, this is why a lot of our customers are asking us and other simulation providers make the simulator faster because as it has a, a measurable improvement in terms of efficiency. But however, we have another variable we can work with, which is work. So the real question is, how can we enable customers also to be able to do more work per delta time or actually eliminate redundant or inefficient work. And this is where PSS really comes in, right? Yes, but the real trick is how do we introduce it in such a way that the IP block designer doesn't have to learn something new? Because one of their challenges is they took a long time to adopt system Verilog, and then they had to adopt UVM and now asking them to adopt yet a new standard called PSS is going to uh, get a lot of resistance. So what we've done at Mentor is we've taken our product called Infact, which was one of the genesis of PSS in that technology, and we've packaged up applications in such a way that we can use existing UVM system Verilog test benches read it in, apply the PSS technology to be more efficient focusing on the work per time. And we do that by actually removing and optimizing out a lot of the redundancies that come from constraint random uh, test methodologies, which are the predominant methodology. What that enables the block designer is take advantage of the PSS concept and technologies but have a measurable way that they can go to their management and say, here's how I can adopt this technology and directly measure the improvement in performance. In fact, what customers are seeing by adopting this is about a 3 to 2x improvement in simulation regression efficiency. So you've done two things here. You've both reduced the complexity so it enables you to see where the problem is, and you've also in increased the reuse. Correct. And that's one of the real things that we were trying to focus on in terms of really bringing this new standard, this new methodology, this new language to the market is reduce the barrier. Because if we force customers to start at the top of the pyramid, there's a long uh, road to return on investment. But if we can make it easy for them to adopt it at the bulk of their challenge, with very fast return on investment, we think that's a real benefit for customers. So putting this in perspective, what does this actually mean for the verification teams? What this means is we're, we're providing uh, companies the ability to adopt PSS over time uh, through an evolutionary process rather than a revolutionary and throwing away their existing verification environments. So leverage their current existing environments and bring in PSS incrementally. First starting with the IP block designers by enabling that technology with very little disruption because they don't have to learn a new language. 
then once that's adopted, bringing in the language concept focus at the chiplet group where they can more efficiently create reconfigurable uh, scenarios, which are a challenge in System Verilog and UVM, and then eventually grow that to a standard used across the platforms. And in fact, what they can do is they could actually start some of these efforts in parallel, but actually start to see immediate benefits of adopting the standard in the IP block space while they're building their infrastructure at the SOC level. So one of the things that we're doing at Mentor is we're not looking at PSS or PSS tools as a single tool, but we're actually looking at how do we employ this and make tools in the tool chain PSS enabled based on the type of field of use in verification and the particular users. Robert Hogan-Stride, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you, Ed.